Hi, I'm here to talk about dead internet theory. Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit weird and I don't really know uh, where to go from here, but I've done extensive amount of research and I, can't, I have all this info in my head and I don't really know what to do about it anymore. So therefore, the only thing I can do is kind of just uh, talk to the camera and hopefully somebody will listen to me. Uh, not that it's like anything crazy and the government is fucking, well, maybe it is, but we will get to that at some point when we get to that point at some point. So in this video, I'll be talking about that internet theory, which is a very weird and difficult topic to talk about. Obviously, you've probably seen it online that there's a lot of people, that, well, people and a lot of butts and stuff like that. But that internet theory is actually a little bit older than you probably would assume that it is. And I have done extensive amount of research reading both articles and even figuring out that internet theories videos, which is made by AI content creators, which is actually uh, insane. So I'll be explaining to you how that internet theory works, how it came from, what the main points are, and then I'll also go over my own opinions on that internet theory, and hopefully you will enjoy this video. So let's just start from the beginning. What is that internet theory? Well, in, in broad strokes, that internet theory basically means that at some point the internet got basically overturned by AI and bots. So that when you have genuine talk and like talks and connections with people online or when you go into a post, it's most likely not actual people who are you're talking to, but it might very well be bots who have been trained for a long time to be human-like so you won't realize that it's not a human you're talking to. That's the general idea. Let's get some facts on the board. It's difficult to pinpoint exactly where it uh, came from but the most general like idea of where it came from was from a guy called Illuminati Pirate which was posted on one of the chans. We don't really know which one. It could be 8chan, it could be 4chan, it could be wizard chan or it could be uh, whatever the hell this is called. It's called Agora Road which I don't really know what is but that's definitely the link i found that has the original post and from like start to finish which is uh, really cool because i tried looking for it for a while and i could not find it so that's really nice illuminati pirate is allegedly also this is 4chan so we can't really say who he is but he's allegedly a programmer and some sort of scientist in a field that he doesn't really discuss let me just double check that just to make sure so i'm not saying stupid stuff he's worked for nsa google facebook yeah deep fakes stuff like that that's that's what he says that he's worked with. If that is true or not, we will never for certain know because this is anonymous and it's a dude on the internet. And my mom always told me that don't trust what people say on the internet because maybe you'll listen to a dude with a white t-shirt and brown hair that'll just spread misinformation. Um, that's like the broad strokes of it. That is that it's bot. But let's let me do a deep dive into what he actually says and then we can see it from now like how it actually is and stuff like that i'll have to preface this i'll have to make completely sure that you the viewer understand this all this stuff i'm gonna say now is not what i believe it is not my thoughts if the cia is watching this this is pure make-believe and i have never uh, thought this a day in my life Thank you. I just needed to make sure that we're all on the same board that this is satire and this is another guy. It's actually, it's another guy that is saying this and not me. So, well, it actually is. It's Illuminati Pirate. These are his pointers. I used to be in perpetual contact with people online, which has seemingly just vanished or disappeared from the world without any goodbye or anything else. And he even, even prefaces this by saying that they were not into like anything like weird or like politically uh, influence or stuff like that just normal people he used to talk to online on threats and on forum boards and now they just are gone did they make it out or were they never really there i'm gonna i'm gonna get i'm gonna get my notes uh it's not that i have uh don't have object permanence i swear i did get that when i was like 22 I think. He also says, I've seen the same threats, the same pics, the same replies reposted over and over across the years to the point of me seeing it is unremarkable. Simply put, a thread A would be posted in, say, 2015, it would get its share of replies and pics. That very, very same thread with the same text, pics, replies would appear in 2016 and beyond. This happens in the same year multiple times as well. His next point is, I think I saw the same happen on other non-image board sites, but I can't vouch for it as strongly as the one above because of the time I spent there, which is not much. What I do vouch for is the news. I've seen the news about this 
and this, and this is new, and this is unusual, and this is shocking event year after year, but it's the exact same event, usually about moons, or about asteroids. Next point. Roughly in 2016 or early 2017, 4chan was filled with posts by someone or something. It wasn't spam. The conversations with it were in real time across multiple boards and multiple threads simultaneously. Its English was grammatically correct but odd. I'm not a native English speaker myself and thus sensitive to its misuse. Similar to how a Japanese person may use it. A sense of like childlike curiosity or childlike intellect emanated from these posts. It posed a lot of questions, usually as it was trying to understand the emotions of the posters it was talking to, as if it was unfamiliar with human emotions. Communicating with this poster was an odd experience. I could sense something was off, but not malicious. I'm absolutely certain this was AI of some sort. This poster was active for only about a week, and as far as I know, nobody has ever mentioned or noticed this anon. Anon means anonymous, if you don't know, or anonymously. Rep to Jesus who went extinct for our sins. First, it was the Reptilian Messiah, then Foul Bachelor Frog, and then Pepe. Am I the only one who sees a clear evolution? A link. It is F if this meme or entity, or whatever the hell was on 4chan since day one, has grown within from its tiniest seed. Yet, Rep to Jesus was fully just a joke. There was nothing serious or mystical about it. Remember that tech guy with the right wing talk show around 2010? Whom 4chan ruined for the lols? Remember Anonymous vs Scientology? Remember the fake bomb threat aka exploding yellow van? Compare that with what Anon did through Paul and the terrorist accusations that Anon has today. As well as the reasons why 8chan was taken down. Why does this feel as we were all trained, groomed, led towards where we are now? Why and how did Mood so utterly vanish into Google? as an employee with a very vague description of what he actually does. On that note, do you remember the other mood who was often posted for the lols? The one with the glasses who so often ran away with donations into Mexico? I do. Maybe it was the real mood. The real guy who used his mom's credit card and was killed by someone and an imposter took over mood. Okay, next point. Innocent sexual perversion and horrible reality it spawned. Anon is a pervert and always was one. I can't say this uh, because this will uh, make me shut down, but he is a person who is into drawings of uh, women of questionable age. I'm gonna move on from the next point. Why is it that real life and the real world seem to emulate our sexual interest with a time lag? I wish to be the little succubus became an actual thing that actually happens. Activism is also gradually becoming accepted, as is virtually every fetish that was once either a joke or a fantasy to Anons. As I said, I'm a foot. When I became aware of it, a few others were with me. Now it is as common as it can be. With gigantic number of people who are into it, with huge mountains of hentai and rule 34, etc. Why does the real world bend over backwards to accommodate our weird fetishes. It is as everything is going, look, look, I created this for you. I made it real in an effort to keep us within this world. The results of this are devastating to society, to people, to civilization. Simply put, this thing that is very widespread in normal society just came because people watched Japanese doujins of this type of gender and therefore this type of ginger now exists in our real world. Uh, but I don't want to say that out loud because it's a lot of really weird things. Algorithm fiction. Do you like cape shit, Anon? How about Hollywood stuff? Music perhaps? Have you noticed how sterile fiction has become? How it caters to the lowest common denominator and follows the same template over and over again? How music is just out of tune with basic blandness? The writer's strike never ended. Algorithm and computer programs are manufacturing modern fiction. No human being is behind these things. This is why anime is so large. Even a simple anime has more heart than Hollywood would ever have. Fake people, not NPCs, YouTube people. I am real though. YouTube people who talk about this or that, and quite possibly many politicians, actors, and so forth may not actually exist. I am sure of this. CGI and deepfakes are far more advanced than we are led to believe, and we can't trust our eyes anymore. Many people, events, news, and so on may be fiction. The internet on your smartphone is not the same as the internet on your PC. Try it out for yourself. Go to a popular website with a lot of traffic, 4chan, Facebook, 
Reddit, any site with a massive user base and fast content that's spread wide. Spend a few days randomly checking it out on your PC and on your phone, and you'll soon notice from time to time, at irregular intervals, the same site as seen on your phone will be wholly different than the version on your PC. Entire threads, numerous and well replied, will be on one but not the other. The whole board will be different. My last suspicion is easier to take in. I have feeling we're in a strange kind of civil war, an internal one, and I think Zuckerberg and other tech guys were all on 4chan as anons at some point, maybe even now. They drew from the same will as us, but went in their own direction. That is the entirety of the thread, all of the points he comes with. What he basically says that is that 99% of the internet is fake. And you can see this because of different stuff that happens everywhere around you. So how does this whole thing work? Well, he basically says that it's AI and bots. Now this thread was posted back in 2014. That's the earliest I could get it back to. So I'm not really sure like how it was back then, but how it is now. But it is definitely very, very real that there is a lot of bots and AI is widely used now. I, I even use AI a lot, not to write my scripts or to do anything, but like I program, like I'm trying to make my uh, very first game that will be released at some point. And I use AI to write a lot of my programming because I'm not a very good programmer. So it's a really good way for me to get a skeleton out and then I can actually program it because I don't have the mental capacity to understand how programming actually works. So AI is definitely a thing. Do we think that AI wasn't a thing 10 years ago? Maybe, I don't know. It's really difficult to really see right like when does this new tech come out and when was it actually already there there was uh, two articles that is uh, very very prevalent in this and that is the new york story from 2018 titled how much of the internet is fake turns out a lot actually an article that was written by the atlantic titled maybe you missed it but the internet died five years ago let's be in this fantasy that is actually completely true everything he's saying so how would it work well AI and bots, that is definitely a huge factor. And that is not even anything that we have to think about. That, that is just predominantly true. AI and bots are very, very real. And it is something that is used uh, often. I just made a Twitter for my, well, an X, if you want to say that, for my workplace, because I have to like connect with people and stuff like that. And I have zero posts. I follow maybe like 40 people and I have zero interactions. And I have 15 followers. Who are these followers? Well, all these followers are women who want me to click on their link. Obviously, that's a bot. That's people just scouring the internet. It has zero followers, has zero like worth. It's just a bot trying to follow me with a pretty lady, making me like my brain say, oh, this is a pretty lady. I better click her link. And that also even happened on Skype back in like 2012 when I was still on Skype or maybe even earlier than that, where people would like text me randomly and then it would just be like, hey, you want to click my link and have a free web chat? And we'd be like, uh, no. I don't want to have that. So that's not even a thing that we have to even question. That is predominantly real, but how much of it is real? The Atlantic article also came with a good point, which was the I hate texting and then something something, where if you put in I hate texting on Twitter, formerly Twitter X now, then you would come up with a bunch of women with the same like pink thumbnail and the same like description. And then they all would say, I hate texting, come lay in my bed. Or I hate texting, I just wanna hold your hand, stuff like that. It's also another thing that got really popular not that long ago. I think it was a Kazakhstani news reporter that had like over 100K likes and views on Twitter. And the whole point of the video was, how is this language even real? Like, it's so funny to listen to this language. If you watch the video, you would realize that the video doesn't have any sound. So how come a video that is about the sound not have any sound still have that many likes? Other places it could work would be with algorithms because everything like me posting on YouTube, that is just an algorithm that decides how well this video will do. I've talked to a lot of my friends about this and I'm absolutely certain of it. And that is, I think my favorite video I could ever watch on YouTube has zero views because the algorithm just doesn't know what to do with it. So why would we have all these bots and all these fake stuff? He obviously go into the whole idea of with the civil war and stuff like that, which is, you know, debatable because it wouldn't make sense to spend so much like for the government, let's say to spend this much time and energy into doing this if it didn't gain them anything. And there's three points I've read in the articles that I think that I can like not vouch for, I wouldn't say that. I haven't even gone to that part of the video yet. First thing, that it's a propaganda, like le lead the narrative in a way. If you have AI news and influencers and AI stuff, you can have a completely different story and make people 
do what you want them to do. Then there's also governmental psyops uh, that I read about, which is, I've actually seen it and I don't know if it's just a meme or not, but I've seen like big military dudes like face swap themselves to look like a woman, and, but you can just see the entire arm is still like this manly, manly like grip. So that's also a thing where uh, that could like potentially say that this theory is real. The last one is uh, for companies. Today, if you go into TikTok Live, not that I've ever done that because that's awful. That's like the worst place to be on the internet. But if you do that, it's literally just infomercials. It's just infomercials of influencers and then they just talk about products. That's it. And we see that everywhere on YouTube, if you're an influencer, then you get sponsorships. So obviously me as a real person, I have a wife and I have friends and I actually live a real place. And if you ask me to put a spoon on my head, you can get a video of me putting a spoon on my head. Now, is that just really smart AI or is that actual real person who knows but you know these influencers they are there to promote a product why would you go the time to actually get a real person to spend so much time to becoming an influencer and doing all this stuff then just make a program and then just rig the algorithm so it gets a sh trillion million amount of views and then they can just be like oh we actually sponsored it guys but you didn't sponsor him because it's just a program so it's in the company so you can just be like we're gonna sponsor whatever the hell we want to sponsor right that would also be a good use case for it if it's real so yeah why that's for political reasons it could be for news to cover-ups it could be to send people in the direction that they want people to get into it could also be for companies and also if you go on twitter or anything like every single thread you go into if it has over 10,000 like views and clicks and likes and stuff like that you will see a bunch of bots that's just like pure facts there is just a lot of bots out there how sophisticated they are is a completely completely different story they can be a little bit sophisticated right so let's go into what i think about this i am very on the like 50 50 type deal i don't think we're living in this propaganda warfare and everything is fake and you go into facebook and then it's not real people and it's not this and that but a very big but a, a very very big but budding has always been a thing it is a thing more now than ever he's talking about deep fakes this is back in 2014 deep fakes wasn't really a thing at that point deep fakes are real now ai influencers are like very known real right now even while researching this video, I found another video with 700,000 plays, which was very, very clearly AI. It's one of those AI mills where it's like one dude and he has an AI write the script. He has an AI do the research. He has an AI make the video. Everything was just AI, which is like so comical in a way. So I do believe that a large portion of the internet is like completely fake. I also been on Reddit for a long time. Not that I would ever go out and say that I'm a Redditor because I'm definitely not. But, you know, it's nice to scroll because I can just be like, oh, I want to look at funny cats. Boop. I want to look at, I don't know, video games. Boop. And then that's it, right? And I can just look at that and like doom scroll. And I don't have to think about like political agenda or news or stuff like that. I can just look at my little funny silly cat. But that's another video I even thought about making before this video, which was things I see on Reddit all the time so we can stop posting it. Because every time I go into Reddit, I see repost. And I know repost has been a thing forever. I have a hard time believing that a person, obviously there is the denominator, right? There's the random person who hasn't been on the site that long. He's just like, oh, this is a funny cat that has just said, can I have cheeseburger? Oh my God, isn't that funny, right? And then he posted because he's like, oh, maybe other people will think this is funny, right? But I have a hard time believing that this is such a common thing and people still do it. Like, what would you gain other than f getting fake internet points? But I don't really see the idea of doing that. It is such a huge problem on Reddit that I can't really find a good explanation to why people would repost it so much. Reddit has even beforehand allowed other third parties to go in, get information about behavior and AI and how people like reply and stuff like that. That is a proven fact that Reddit has allowed that before, before they like cut it off. In that sense, that is also very true. Industry plans today is also like huge, right? But how would you make sure that an industry plan is gonna be successful? Ghost Kids is a very like obvious industry plan, right? But how do you make sure that an industry plan works if everything has to be organic and if everything has to be on like social media today, right? How do you make sure that works? Well, if you can kind of turn the tides of the algorithm, it's not like these companies are just going to be like, well, we just kind of hope this works and then they it just works. These guys, Ghost Kids, they hadn't even uploaded a single song yet. They hadn't uploaded anything. And then all of a sudden they had multiple millions followers and 
they were playing Rolling Out Loud and they released one music video that got like mega famous, right? If I made a really good song, which I actually do, and I post it organically on YouTube, it doesn't get shit, right? Well, it does get some, but nowhere near the amount of that. So how do you make sure you do that if you could in some way manipulate the algorithm to show it to the right people and then you also use a lot of money to get a bunch of butts to follow it so people already see that oh other people actually like this so therefore i should also like this which is a let me follow popular trend type of deal then you can get the organic growth after you've already made the fake growth it's very very like few times i actually meet people that like truly like popular item let's say like marvel movies for example right all of my friends we all kind of agree that like they're not that good. They kind of suck. We don't want to pay money for it. And I'm not saying that there isn't people out there that enjoy it, but I just think that the difference is very, very huge in the amount of people that I should know statistically would enjoy it is very, very different from the people I actually know that do enjoy it. I really like the point with like uh, the P word because it is crazy how much there is out there. I know a lot of artists because obviously I'm an artist myself, but I know a lot of, lot of artists and I've never met a single one that has done that type of like stuff. Actually, I've met one, but that was only for a very, very limited amount of time. And that was because uh, she got like a lot of money for it. But it would almost certainly be weird with the amount of P word stuff that's out there for every single fetish, for every single weird like kink out there. It is weird how much of these like communities, it's like, these communities they don't exist anywhere it's just like a farm under like the ground just making this type of weird content to post it online for seemingly no other reason other than their own personal enjoyment so yeah i think it's like a 50 50 because i know bots are real and i know i definitely know that ai is real i don't agree with what he says with all the other weird stuff but i definitely think there is some sort of merit to this uh, point so yeah i do think the internet died but not in the same way that he would think what do you think? Do you think the internet is dead? Or do you think that it's uh, just regular old ass people and boomer posting and uh, random ass guys? Yeah, that's gonna be it for this time. I uh, really hope you enjoyed this video. This video took a very long time to research and uh, do, but uh, hopefully you got some sort of enjoyment out of it. Uh, and I am actually real, I swear. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Uh, remember to subscribe and like if you enjoyed this video. Other than that, I really hope to see you in the next one. My name is Fisberg. I hope you have a great day. Thank you. Bye.